Hello. 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 Am I on? <laughs> Hi. Sorry. Okay. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people. Nine people. Eight people. What should we do? Would you guys like to like get in a circle and have a conversation about collaboration? Or would you like to see a talk as though the room is full of people? Which would be weird. I'm just going to learn this stuff for myself. I don't see any of the people that I work with actually doing this stuff. <laughs> OK, I'll tell you what. How about if you guys move up, and I'll run through the talk, and then we'll have a conversation. How's that sound? That would be really helpful to me, because then I would have people to look at. <laughs> um, I'm not big on well-rehearsed talks anyway, so it's pretty much going to be a conversation regardless. Pardon me? No, I don't mind. What are you looking for? What's, he look, what's she looking for? They, what are they looking for? A router? Is that it? OK. <laughs> OK, why are we here? We are here to talk about collaboration. Um, and I'm, I wonder if I can do this with no notes. That would be really cool. Yeah, I'm going to try that. OK, because I have notes on my screen, but screw that. We live in this culture where we talk about cooperation, right? We talk about uh, everybody working together to pull their own weight and um, to contribute, right? And uh, to act together for a common purpose. And cooperation is really cool, but it has some limitations. And I want to talk about what those limitations are and how you can go beyond that. I made some math. <laughs> Okay, so these are, these are vectors, and we're going to do some vector addition. I hope it's not offensive. <laughs> okay, so let's say you have a goal, and it's a shared goal, right? Common purpose. And you know what that is. Like, that's already hard, but you've got to simplify down to a one-dimensional common purpose. And one person is all gung-ho, and so they put that much effort toward it, whatever that number is. And person two is pretty gung-ho and gets it, and so together they put the sum of their, of their efforts toward it, right? Then you add a third person who kind of likes the idea, but they don't really know how to do it. So they only contribute a little bit, right? Now your total, <coughs> excuse me, forward movement. <coughs> oh God, that was worse. I was trying to cover it, <laughs> failed. Anyway, so now you have a total forward movement, that's the sum of those. But then you add a fourth person, and the fourth, where's the fourth person? There, the fourth person, and their effort is not quite so positive, and the reason is because they don't really understand what you're doing, right? So they're kind of dragging you down. So your total is smaller. And you add a fifth person who's like really not getting it and not really convinced, and their effort's even smaller, and you add a sixth person who's actually pissed off, and their effort is way negative, and so now you have six people working on the same thing, and you have less forward movement than when you had three, right? Have you ever experienced that? Like on a team, like it grows? and the forward movement shrinks. <laughs> so but that's when you add more people, right? <laughs> so collaboration is like cooperation, plus rainbows. <laughs> I had a really hard time finding, like, I was looking at rainbow, rainbow sh shitting unicorns, and I was like, I hate these so much I can't even use them sarcastically. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to talk about how to make collaboration happen and why. Um, because collaboration is something that lets you create something bigger than the sum of the parts instead of smaller. So there are basically three things I want to talk about with regard to um, collaboration. There are lots of factors, but there are three that I want to cover. They are um, ensuring that all the voices are heard so that everybody's involved. And part of the reason for this is that um, People are quiet, right? And sometimes quiet people are really smart. And sometimes loud people are not so smart. <laughs> and so you end up with a situation where the people making the decision are the ones that have more voice, right? Or more pushiness, which is often like the opposite of what you want. 
Um, so it's important to make sure that everybody's being heard. It's also important that you're concentrating on building new solutions. We like to put up ideas, right, and then vote on them and pick the best one. That gives us the best one person could come up with, right, which is better than only one person coming up with an idea and being stuck with it. Competition is good. But what's better is emergence, the ability to create whole new ideas. And we do that by putting ideas up and then letting them evolve and shift, right? That's how new ideas emerge. And then finally, by seeking consensus. And the reason you want to seek consensus is because when you're doing the cooperation thing and somebody's decided what the goal is and then everybody puts whatever effort toward it that they want to, which is either a lot of forward effort or some backwards effort, when you seek consensus, you have buy-in from everybody. Buy-in from everybody means you're getting lots of forward pull, right? You don't have anybody dragging you down. You don't have anybody resisting. <clears throat> so it's important to have a consensus. And now I want to talk about how to accomplish those things. <coughs> I have to cough and I don't know how to mute this. Would you like to tell me how to mute it? Please. Okay. I mean, I know you can hear me cough, but it's not as bad. All right, so how do you do this? How do you make sure all voices are heard? There's lots of ways to do this. One way is to go around and ask people, right? You have, you have two tasks. One is you have to quiet the loud people. And another is that you have to encourage the quiet people to speak up. So you can ask people directly if you're facilitating. You can say, you know, what do you think, right? And you get feedback that way. There's a trick that an agile coach taught me, which is that if somebody is loud and they're repeating something over and over again, then they won't stop. If you somehow convince them that you've heard them, um, his trick is to walk up, like if people are in a circle, walk up and just put your hand on their shoulder. They stop doing that. It's really weird. <laughs> okay, little secret tricks. Um, there's a thing called fist to five. Have any of you heard of that? So fist to five is a, it's, so it's misused as a voting mechanism, right? You bring up an idea and you wanna find out if we're all on the same page, right? I know what we should do, let's, you know, do such and such to the server, right? And you're in a room full of people and two people are like, yes! And one person's not saying anything because they never say anything. And then there's other people who are sort of nodding politely. At that point, you can ask. Um, and a fist of five is when everybody goes, like whatever, they raise up some fingers, okay? Five fingers means I'm totally in total agreement with this. And uh, three fingers means I have reservations. A fist means I'm so uncomfortable that I actively think this is a really bad idea and I want to stop conversation on it or I want to, you know, I would block it. I actually talk to a group of people who say, in our, in our group, a fist means fuck you. Am I allowed to say that? It's too late. Too late, I said it, okay. Um, it means you're an asshole, that's what he said to me. And I'm like, okay, let's go back. Collaboration is when you want to hear what everybody thinks, right? So you have to be okay with a fist, right? It has to be okay to say I'm this uncomfortable, right? That's part of being open to the actual information that you want to get. Anyway, that's one option for getting people's voices heard. Quiet people will give you some response on a fist of five because they're not going to lie, right? And they have to do something, so the truth comes out. The second thing is building new ideas. Building new ideas is like the hardest part of collaboration for some people anyway. Um, because what you have to do is you have to be willing to throw things out and be wrong a lot. You have to be willing to be just wrong. But we're wrong all the time. Like everything we do, we guess and then we criticize it and we come up with better solutions all the time, right? Like I think this is the strongest bridge we can build. Somebody said that at some time. Right? Now we have much stronger bridges, and that's because they were wrong. And so far, like, we've built really strong bridges, but we haven't built the strongest bridge you can because we're wrong all the time. You have to be willing to be wrong. You have to be willing to put your ideas out there and have them shift and change when they're criticized. You have to welcome that. I'll leave that there for now. Um, seeking consensus. How do you seek consensus? 
You go to Mark's talk tomorrow at 4, and he'll tell you how to seek consensus. What I really want to say is that um, the hard part of seeking consensus is convincing the other people in the room that it's important. But it's, it's really about listening to every single voice. Because, like I said, if you're, not, if you're not getting consensus, what you're getting is people fighting against what you want to have happen. So to seek consensus, you need to clarify your goals, right? You need to make sure everybody's heard. <laughs> and you need to be fallible repeatedly fallible. So there's my diatribe. Yes? <laughs> can, I, can I pause you for a second? This is the last slide after which we're going to have a discussion. So would that be a good time to talk? OK. There's my diatribe. I will read it to you because I like reading slides. It's not really about meetings or consensus as a system for solving problems. It's about opening up your own heart, right? It's about not clinging to your ideas, not needing to be right, and letting new ideas emerge. That's really the, the bottom line. OK. So how would you guys feel about, did I do that? <laughs> oh, wow. Well, like this, last time I spoke, I had the, this thing in my phone pocket, or on my phone pocket, and so it kept going, <laughs> and it took like half the talk to figure it out. Anyway, so would you guys be up for like making a circle and having a conversation, since it's such a small group? I think that would be cool. Okay, so my name is Angela Harms, and that's in the book or whatever, and my Twitter handle is also that, so I don't need to put contact information up. Okay, let's talk. wrong thing that takes a ton of money and then you just wasted three months building something that's not any good anyway so <laughs> just taking the time to talk about it like you're building so much value in like actually thinking about something before you do it I think I'm gonna back out a little bit just because I think I don't want to be uh, I think there's a lot of good positive Well, but, but at the same time, like, I think at least part of the talk is about what are the good things? You know, right. what are the good things that can come out of like collaboration? And maybe, maybe until that's been discussed really strongly, like, I don't know if the 
arguments against it are, yeah. are, are as valuable, right? Yeah, no, and you also don't want the conversation turning into, hey, let's all convince this one guy. That's, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and on the, you know, like, like I said, part of it, I'm not necessarily even you know, arguing for my position. I'm arguing for what if I said, hey, let's do this. Right, and, what your team's going to say. And a somewhat, you know, collaborative and somewhat collaborative. You know what, uh, so when I think about teams that I've been involved in, you know, there's, there's always somebody who's got the conversation under control, right, and they, they're saying their piece, and, and they're all, like, they're the ones who are like, we're not going let's just get on with it, I don't care, you know, and then if you want to make a good decision, you've got to get underneath that, right, because otherwise you're just going to do with this one person who's all, you know, manic and, like, in control, the salesman guy, whoever it is. You're going to do what they want all the time, and it's not going to be right all the time, right? You don't even have like thoughtful, it will be right quiet moments, time. right? They're, they're going to have enthusiasm and yeah. energy, but what they're not going to have is like well, all the other characteristics. Some of those people have. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, some of those people have an uncanny knack for getting at least a good decision. You know, that's another part of it. Very do, you always, <laughs> do you always care about getting the best decision, or what if? What if the plan is 80% as good as it could have been, and actually that's fine? There is a, there's a decision-making process that's part of um, collaboration, where you go, okay, so this particular part, I don't really care very much. I care that it get done, but I don't care how, and somebody else cares how, and I just go, okay, this is yours. Right? Is that that's still collaboration. Was that a Doc's blog like yesterday? He did blog about yeah. it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so I think like how far this slide, or like how perfect does it need to be? It really depends on how like much how important getting its consensus is. If it's like three people and you're talking about, you know, the big grand idea for your startup, like you damn well better have consensus because there's three of you. Like you have to have this. <laughs> but like if you're a, if you're like a group of twenty five people in like the middle of like an eighty five story building where the people like not only getting consensus are hard, it might not be that important, you know? Well, like, but that's part and, of collaboration. And, and, this is not a talk about consensus, although it is yeah. consensus, right? This is about <laughs> this is about collaboration, and collaboration definitely involves the ability to walk away from a decision that doesn't need you, right? Like like the open space rule about how you know if you're not contributing, if you're not learning, you go away. Um, she had her hand up. I, I don't know your name, but Jill, you were going to say something. Um, I was just curious if you had any. Getting around the boss that says collaborate on this, and then at the end it's well, my original decision was the best anyway. <laughs> 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 is there a person in this group that his idea wasn't the best? And is there a higher manager to uh, showcase that to? Not necessarily, but it's like you've been working on something more important than the entire time. You, right, you already had your mind made up. You still get paid though, right? Yeah. At least you get yeah. paid. It's not just me. Who wants to work for money? That's all I had to do was wait two or three years. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, actually, there, there's, a, there's a different way of dealing with that, which I, th which I find very valid in some cases, which is if, if you see that pattern developing where the boss is giving someone to collaborate on and then, and then well, the boss is pretending that you're collaborating and you go ahead and pretend you're collaborating and say, oh yeah, we had tons of meetings about it. If, you I mean, decided your, your way was the right way. If, it, <laughs> if it's really fake collaboration and you can't fix it, maybe you should just play along with it and stop yeah. and save Save the jumping through hoops. I mean, I mean, you really work on the thing you should be working on anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just dodge it. And that, that, depending on the circumstances, might be a perfectly valid way of dealing with it, as stupid as it sounds. Or you could take the best idea and relabel it as his idea. <laughs> 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 this is what <laughs> 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 
that's that's absolutely perfect. perfect. You were right all along. <laughs> that's, that's absolutely that's absolutely a work, uh, technique that works. Like I mean, when, when you say when you when you say to somebody when you say to somebody you know somebody tells you you know I think that we should make this gray, and and you go you go back to them a week later and you're like you know I think it was really a great idea that you wanted to make it a grayish blue. Uh, <laughs> actually, the blue just sounded so good that. I think that maybe we should just go ahead and, and make it blue like you said. <laughs> and, and, like, if you... I mean, and that will work out this experience. Yes. Where you've That's gone to set it so somebody... <laughs> but when you, you've really gone to somebody and, set, and like, rephrased their <laughs> idea, like, with one difference, and been like, that was a great idea, and people are like... Yeah, yeah thanks. <laughs> Especially if it's, like, a week later, they won't even remember, so... <laughs> Let's go back yeah. with it. I, I, I don't know. I would say if I could be honest, then it would just be a matter of counting down the days until I was gone. That's really true. Because, um, yeah, working in a place that's, that feels like that's the kind of constant, like, soul-sucking that will just get you, you know, it'll just, like, kill your spirit. It, that's how it sounds to me. Like, it's not like an isolated thing, right? It's not I like ended up getting let go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's oh, so a lot of people late. that were like, wow, Congrats. I got shafted, I think. <laughs> but they couldn't say anything because it was a 20-person office. So Is your life so better like, yet? I'm slinging burgers at Rick Robin, oh. so I make them you know. Is he still working at Red Robin? Yeah. At least Red Robin's delicious. Yeah. True. I'll bet there's better things in the future. <laughs> so I have a problem. I have a hard time grabbing the floor like I just did. <laughs> I was about to say. I was about to say. I always find that I'm in a group and, a, and everybody's trying to say something and I try to be polite, let people say what they want to say and wait for that lull. That, that okay. Okay. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. about that topic change where I yeah. can interject something and I never can get everybody's attention or I say five words and then somebody cuts me off and interrupts. Yeah, so anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Is there a way of establishing a protocol within a, a team to allow people to have their say, uh, how do you do that? And as a quiet person who maybe isn't being recognized as having this need to say, how do you convey that to a group when you can't even get their attention in the first place? You did a great job, by the way. I'm a big fan of talking sticks or like mm -hmm. objects, although people make fun of them and get pissy yeah, and claim that they're not needed, so that's really hard. Stuffed animals. Stuffed animals are really good. You have to be, you get thrown into you have to stroke stuff. the bunny to talk. Yeah. <laughs> but okay, so Mark, I want to ask you a question. What do you do in a team where you are suggesting a talking device and the team like the loud people on the team are device and you're looking at it? Because it's not you. And the quiet people are in the corner going. I, I, and serious serious answer to that. Why are you asking me in particular? I don't know, because I think okay. I have an idea. Okay. Um let's see, I don't have a I don't have a completely brilliant idea off the top of my head, but one way I think I would deal with that is, it doesn't always work to say, try it today. Yeah. Or hot yeah. potato and throw it to someone who's not talking? Well, yeah, that's what, but I, I guess if the question is, how do you get the dominating, tending people to just accept something that doesn't let them run the conversation all the time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, my approach would be, and I'm not, not usually the boss, is say, play along with it today, see how it goes. I think because people are more likely to try something and go, oh, that kind of works, than to imagine what it's going to be like and imagine it working. And I'm sorry, I totally cut you off. That in 30 seconds, it electrocutes you. But <laughs> <laughs> one thing I noticed like, with the people not letting you get into the conversation, it, it seems a lot worse in Ohio than it was in Connecticut where I grew, grew up. Mm -hmm. I've actually seen people work. They wouldn't stop talking, so I actually started talking over them, but they still wouldn't like, shut yes. up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's and like, I keep talking about the thing. I mean, you know. That or the people love here are just kind of like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think on an individual scale, like, for like how, one thing to comment on is that, like, when you, like, when you try to be a two, it's like, it's really quiet. Like, you're, the more, the more nominated people and more, like, outgoing people are going to blast in because they're going to talk over you regardless. They, like, launch in to a, like, probably like 40% louder volume than like you guys have started to like enter a conversation with. And like I'm kind of quiet, I like to be quiet, I like not to barge in, but like you kind of have to be like, well, I'm gonna say this, I'm going to say it loudly, 
because people will stop. <laughs> you know, people will not mm -hmm. jump over me as they try and, everybody's trying to shoot it as soon as there's that pause. And whoever starts out loudest <laughs> is probably the person who gets it. The way I grew up, though, you shouldn't have to. Yeah, you really shouldn't. Yeah. It sucks. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> well, yeah, it's just like everything you were supposed to be doing as you were brought up, just be polite. doesn't yeah. work, does it? It's true. It's true. Yeah. That's right. Only yeah. loud mouths really get their way. Well, one of the things this brings up for me is, like, um, you were talking about you're not usually the boss. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of times there isn't a boss, right? Right. And so you're faced with a situation where either you're one of the loud ones, in which case you can notice that and, like, do the kind caring thing, right, and change the situation using your own energy, yep. right, or you're one of the quiet ones, in which case you gotta strap on a pair and, you know, make it make a change, because you're not the only quiet one, right? So if you're a quiet one who understands this stuff, and there's another quiet one next to you who doesn't, like, you can actually, like, make the world better by finding a way to do it. Just be done. Have you ever tried and used other mechanisms that Besides, like a group circle talking, like uh, I've done it just a few times for really specific things, like give a wiki form yep. that both helps 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 make the loud people less loud because you only got words right. and um, and caps lock caps lock. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it also like makes people think about their idea before, and so a lot like I do that before I uh, propose an idea, anyways, because yeah. I write it down. I'm like, wow, that was a stupid idea. That's one of the like, getting quite people speak up and become great. Not just like anonymous. email, but okay. yeah, anonymous, yeah. Because right. I think there's a, you got SharePoint here, God. But there is a spot where you can post things on SharePoint. <laughs> but it is, that's all it is, it's just a disaster. Well, it's like it's sticky, right? It's sticky notes. We're not allowed, we're FDA regulated, we're not allowed sticky notes. What? Seriously. Really? Mm -hmm. Wait, this all the paperwork possible. and all the test processes, if there's a sticky note in there where it says, ah, just push the green button, oh, all hell will break. <laughs> They've already been out of Because we're resident or something? No, because we're supposed to follow the procedure. We uh, work on CT scanners. And they're, oh. They, they actually dose humans with radiation, so everything has to be <laughs> by the book. Yeah. Just, how does it enter into planning or collaborating? <clears throat> no, that's just, just a side thing. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's just sticky notes. The sticky notes are a no no. <laughs> I, I, think, I think it's something, and I mean, you know, one of the things that I see. Tyrate. You know, on your tie right, right here, is a, you know, sort of a change in your own heart. And I think that some of that is, I think, among other things, I, I've kind of been, I don't, I don't like if I take a moderate sprint test, um, three of the four continuums, I am uh, smack dab in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've kind of been on both sides of a lot of these. It almost depends on the situation. If people are quieter, I'll end up becoming a louder one or vice versa. Um, in the situations where I've been a quieter person, I think two things happen. Um, uh, if I get cut off or not listened to, my feelings get hurt. Um, and uh, my default behavior is to shut down at that point and say, well, my, my opinion in a certain circumstance is not valuable anymore. And so, uh, and I think to me, kind of straddling that fence a little bit, like I think that the change in my own heart, especially if I'm going to be on both sides of that fence, is like I have to change my behavior in each of those situations. I have to value my own opinion enough and think that everybody being able to share their opinion enough to say I, I need to share my opinion, even if it takes me being interrupted 17 times. Um, and yeah, and when I'm when I'm the one talking, I need to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> It's really hard though when you're getting the feeling like you're not valued. It only takes a couple of times for like to, to be totally soul crushing for like every other conversation after that too. Yeah, if you're the quiet person, if you're if you're naturally quiet, you don't like to speak up. I think sometimes the opposite thing happens is sometimes I'm a little bit annoyed at the quiet person. You know, if it's if it's a fair conversation and the quiet person is being quiet because they like being quiet. They're stealing their ideas, man. You know, they, they came with ideas and they're not Mommy. helping. And like, <laughs> what the fuck? You should be saying something. I mean, you've got, you know, don't don't be don't be sandbagging. Yeah, don't you don't be and don't, well not even so much sandbag, but don't be yeah yeah you got this yeah you got this stash of good ideas and you're not helping. And it's like yeah you can 
you should say something. But what is sandbagging? Oh, holding back. Okay. I think more is holding back and then slamming people with it later. No. Yeah. Well, how come people didn't do my idea? Oh, that <laughs> happens too, right? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I have ideas, but they're not fully formed and I don't want to say them yet, or I need time to absorb and process what's being pushed sure. forward. Well, that's about being willing to be wrong. Well, like, here's my shitty idea, what can we do with that? And you've got a bunch of people who I mean, care. Sometimes the ideas don't even come better. to me until five minutes after the meeting. Where right. Yeah. yeah, like the really yeah, good exactly. comeback that right. everybody yeah. wants <laughs> to yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yep. In, in the form of a verbal meeting, I mean, like if you're an engineer, there's so many possibilities. It be, wouldn't be wise to bring something forward that wouldn't even work. You hadn't done the research. Unless it's already vetted. Unless there's some research somewhere where it's a possibility. That's kind of counter to the whole brainstorming process. Exactly. So, I mean, you shouldn't so be afraid to bring something up. Because yeah. if, if you're afraid to bring up an idea because people might laugh at it or something, you're not going to bring up any ideas no, at all. No, it's not going to that because it, it wasn't good in the first place. Well, but you find it's, out and it gets better. That's the thing. If you say, like, you know, why don't we build an elevator to the moon? And then somebody else says, well, you know, it's been demonstrated that that won't work. But we could totally build a rocket. And then somebody's like, oh, a rocket. And then what if we go to Mars instead of the moon, right? Well, I think it depends on whether you've got like, new ideas it, it that didn't exist. Whether you want to have a, a brainstorming process in the first place. Because right. not, not every problem yeah. has brainstorming as a preferred way of solving it. Mm -hmm. And especially if it's, hot, if it's the type of thing where it's engineering and you can't even evaluate an idea without spending six weeks in the lab, go maybe go that's go. not a good brainstorming environment. Mm -hmm. You know, it depends. Uh, Oh, yeah, I was wondering how much of that might be culture. I mean, I don't know. <coughs> it's all culture. What do you mean? Well, what I mean is if that was situational rather than something, well, okay, so the question was whether it was situational because it's engineering, but it, could it be situational because of culture at the place where you work? Is it a place where you're expected to only come up with good ideas and not crappy ones or unwillingly? Un 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 it just doesn't work as well when you're presenting ideas. Yeah, this is not, not the time to create new ideas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I've already done the creative ideas. Right. But yeah, over beers, two weeks before, yeah. we're yeah. going to be talking about these things. Right? I think one of the, one of the things that's kind of come up a couple of times is, is we're sort of talking about this um, the collaboration happening, but it's kind of within the context of sort of that brainstorm session. Right. Um, I was, because kind of when you were talking before, I was wondering, like, what, because to me, I think, I mean, you know, for, to make collaboration happen, especially for an engineer type, um, to say, you know, you can't throw out something in the middle of a meeting and expect a, a, a well-formed answer, you know, so I think, in the, I, I mean, I just, I wonder if there are other sort of environments or, or techniques aside from for that brainstorming meeting that can be talked about where you say, okay, especially with more of the engineer type, somebody who's very discreet and has to have, you know, examples and models and everything else kind of, kind of built out. Like, what other environments can be created to get everybody's opinion or ideas involved that's not just going to be that, like, flash brainstorming? I guess I'm still not convinced about engineering. The reason is that even if you've done research and you've come up with numbers, right? You've got a design, you've got you know all the calculations for stress and whatever. There's still improvements that can be made. Right? People can say, "Hey, did you hear about that new material that's lighter and has more strength?" Right? And then, like, people can say, "Well, what if we move this you know load-bearing thing over here?" Well, we have to do some math, but. Like you still are growing new ideas, and it's that stagnant thing where we think we figure everything out in a little closet, and then we slap it up on the wall, and that's what we do. That keeps us from growing new stuff. It's like kind of like a, an idea that's so bad it turns out right. Like, hey, an escalator, and it, and it works out better than a rocket. Just make the stairs move. I love that idea. So meeting, so yeah. like, 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 like,
Until they caught on fire and they were like, I guess, I guess, like, this format of, like, bringing things to a meeting of, like, all right, here's my work, here's my evidence, is, like, it's not about let's work together on an idea, it's, like, all right, let's all throw an idea and then pick one person's. Like, it's, meetings are kind of hard because you have to all line up on one page, drop everything you're doing, and try and be, like, you know, in this closed room where you can't, you can't take 10 minutes to think about it, you can't mm -hmm. take five right. minutes to Google it. Like, well, fortunately, yeah. the future is bringing us lots of like offline ways of discussing and collaborating, like with campfire. Yeah, yeah. Just, if you have an idea, then you can be like, oh, well, I'll wait 10 minutes, and then I'll post it, or then I'll show that it could even work, and then people can talk about it, we can do 10 more minutes of thinking or whatever we need. Maybe that's what we should do. Instead of having a meeting, we'll just have a theater and we'll all ask Google. <laughs> One of the most of the is you actually force people to sit down and yeah. talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> Collaboration is also not just the process of sitting in a meeting and yeah. coming up with an answer that is a shared answer or one person. No, that's the problem solving-ish, but you know, there's right. implementation, you can collaborate in implementation and definitely in software development, a lot of people hate it. Pair programming kind of rocks when you do it right. Am I right? Am I right? Yeah. But it's it's the ultimate collaboration. It's the ultimate code review. It's it's constant code review. Um, oh, don't get me started. It is not code review. Yeah, it is. But okay, look up my pair programming talk online and watch it, and then know that he is wrong. That's what I'm no, yo mama. Yeah. Yo mama. Yo mama so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Collaboration has lots of other things besides meetings. Yes. Yeah. You yeah. know what? Sure? So, collab. What? What other things? What other things? Yeah. Implementing so, the decision you made for the meeting. Collaboration is about being willing to be wrong, being fallible, and being curious. That's really and and embracing like the contributions of other people around you. It's a whole mindset. It's not you know three techniques to use in a meeting, although there are useful techniques. It's really about just like constantly being fallible. I think it's because you put the teams, like, the teams good above your own, essentially. Like, you're afraid to be wrong in a company or in an environment where if you're wrong, then somebody thinks poorly of you. But yes. if you being wrong is trying to help the company go in the right direction, then that's what people focus on. People aren't focusing, Tyler said a dumb thing in the meeting today, like, right. mm -hmm. you know, like, and that, that really helps encourage the Just assuming that kind of mindset will be, uh, will help everyone else to do. Yeah, yeah, how do you influence so. your environment? I, I think culture like really helps a lot. I don't know if you, it's, it's really hard to create culture, but like mm -hmm. someone that's really compassionate, like that lets people be wrong, because there's a lot of cultures that don't, that yeah. focus on, but there's like, there's always that nugget of awesomeness of like, in that idea of like making the stairs move, or like. <laughs> you still would have said that. Right. Like, <laughs> uh, I totally would have vetoed that, yeah. Stuff. But there's, there's almost always like, this a little bit of your idea is, is like there's a heart of it. It's not your idea. And your idea might not even be like a full idea. It's just like, hey, I just thought of this thing five seconds ago. So obviously it's not going to be well formed, but maybe sharing it will help someone else do something. Yeah. But you need to yeah. Don't you well, see like way more awesomeness come out of a team where like, everybody's willing to be wrong and willing to just talk about stuff and not have to be like, oh, what about the like new programmer who comes onto your team, right? The first day at least, at a bare minimum, the first day is trying to do Trying to make sure it looks like you know what you're doing, and how much time have we wasted? There's so much right? fear we spend there. We spend like though. at least a day, probably a week or maybe a month, like hiding <laughs> our ignorance. At least a month. Yeah, I have a lot I'm of shops still doing that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of shops are like that for a long time. I piss my pairs off so much because they get stuck, and I'm stuck, and I'm like, Hey, do you know how to like fix this Git thing that we fucked up? And they're oh. like. God, you shut up. I'm just going to Google that. <laughs> <laughs> this is like four hours, right? And it's just like, I'm in a room full of people who know Git inside and out, and you want me to keep quiet for another four hours. <laughs> no. Okay. You're talking about you throw an idea out there that's like, it's just an idea, and you don't know how to make it work, or it could be totally wrong. But amazing thing, like, out on the internet, you can just 
throwing it out there like, hey, how about a horrible Nintendo 64? <laughs> That'd be totally impossible to make. And, but there's people out there that can make that happen and redesign the case, cut it, put it together, and that's like a week awesome. later, they turn around like, hey, yeah, check it out. That's awesome. Oh, you need that word? Because that's not on any other system. Huh? Can I have that in Donkey Kong 64? I think there's one out there already. That's what made me think about it. Someone actually take that and make one. Um, where I'm working at is a new department. We're doing repairs. And uh, my concern is about losing the department and losing my job ultimately because we have this one new guy who's green, like really green. And he's supposed to be an autopsy engineer. Uh, we're, we got a lot of stuff coming in that's brand new from the manufacturers. It's failing. Like we're checking it before we send it out to customers out in the field. And it's failing. So it's like, well, there's, they can't even make new parts good. We can't trust them to do the repairs. We want to take over the repairs on these parts. Well, these guys have been doing it for so long. It's their baby. And, you know, we're going to be stepping on their toes if we try to take those repairs away from them and all the money away from them. And it's the wrong decision, though. You should be, instead of saying, let's take it over from them, say, let's get with them and show them. Right. And the autopsy engineer, who's the green guy, is supposed to be able to convey that, and he's not. So far, he's managed to piss off like three different companies that we get parts from. <laughs> and, and as a result from that, is like, well, a, a column eater is one of the things that we do. Now we're not allowed to calibrate. We're not allowed to recalibrate it. We're not allowed to change the little love joy couplers in it to make them work again. Who collaborated on that decision? <laughs> I don't think there was any collaboration on it. I think they were like, hey, you're the autopsy engineer. Talk to those guys and see about getting the repair. There you go. I think you should bring up, I think we need to rethink this decision not to calibrate. Now, I was with him when he met with the power supply guys, and uh, he asked like all the wrong questions. Uh, they obviously told, knew right off the bat and talking to him that this guy was green, and then later on I found out those weren't even the guys that did the power supplies. They were just a, uh, a middleman. So what's the question? What can I do about that? Because, you know, if this guy's so green, he's going to keep pissing people off, and my department's going to fail. You know? Stop, your, stop the oppression of people who are green. <laughs> Mark. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, can be. No, I, I do see them, like, they're treated like lepers a lot of times. Because no one wants to be part of the, like, the thing that blows up. So, yeah. like, they never do that. So, yeah, you can just go and... Go to lunch with this yeah. guy. Or here, just a lot. Get them drunk and out of the way. <laughs> Take the train home. Well, because the more you learn about where he's coming from, the more he's going to be like interested in what you have to say. Right? He's not very interested in what I have to say. Like I'm supposed to be How working with him. How many years have you bought him? Curious. Yeah. I want to speak up in favor of green too, because sometimes that's a good thing. Like if you have the same people always making the same decisions, they tend to go the same way and they get to consensus prematurely. So having somebody who is new blood will get you to rethink and explain some of the assumptions that you make and stuff like that. So that it, it can be a strength, too. It's just a, a, a situation. We are almost done, uh, but there are two people who haven't spoken and I don't know who would like to. Oh. Hi. Hi. Well, going off what you just said, um, see, like in my situation, I'm pretty new to my industry and my job, so and people with me have like 20 plus years of experience, so it almost feels like, you know, how much can I actually offer? It seems like they are, you know, they have a lot more experience and stuff. And it's just weird when we're sitting in a room. There's a few of us that are like in my age group. And it seems like we can't offer a whole lot to the situation. Is it that they don't want to make No, not necessarily. Do you have questions? Yeah, if anything, it's probably more questions than it is uh, things to offer. So. Questions can help you offer. Like Chris was saying, like if you, you ask questions and you get to explain them and start to. That's a really cool thing about pair programming. You're pairing with somebody who's new. How many people are here in program? Okay. You're pairing with somebody who's new to it, right? They ask you, like, why are you doing this? And you go, well, you see, it's because. <laughs> yes. Right? Yes. So you can ask questions like that and you get people to think to me. Yeah, while you're soaking up information from the people you're engineering. Donc du advocate pair programming pour votre personne qui se bat. Du advocate programmeur shoot bot pour faire sur votre personne qui se bat. Sorry. Uh, pair programming most of the time or all of the time when you advocate. Would I advocate? Yeah. Did I say that right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs>
Um, I guess it depends on the people. Right? I mean, I'm very happy to be a part of programming most slash all of the time. But I don't know about advocating because then somebody might stab you. Like, <laughs> like, it really depends on like a person like, and, and what the problem there is. Like, I've seen people who do really well with it and want to do it all of the time. And it's definitely they should be allowed to do it all the time if they want. I'm hoping you focus on something pushing you. Well, it's not, not the same. It's try to, you want to try and get away from like, all right, I'm programming while this guy watches me, rather than it should be the two of us are programming this thing. And I'm one yeah. keyboard. Like, if you have one keyboard and one mouse, you're doing it entirely wrong. I hate saying that, but really, you, I didn't. Yes. I didn't happen to. I didn't happen to be like, all right, stop typing. Half the keyboard is yeah. bad. You, you, you can do it, 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 and then you stop typing when you go. Like if you're, you know, if you're trying to help somebody, like it works. Oh, I love passing the keyboard back and forth. Well, so, if you, if you, okay, if you're, there's like a there's a passing back and forth flow that yeah. is useful, right? Especially if people aren't really good at it, but. The best pair programming experiences that I have are when I don't even know when we switch. Like you can't, like in the middle of a line, like you pause to think and the other person's typing and just doesn't even notice. And it's not like you're like, oh god, now you're typing. It's like you don't even notice. It sounds so dirty. <laughs> it, it takes it's like. Best, it's best if it doesn't even notice. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> You do. You do. Automatically. It was the post session session. No, what time, what time is it? 3.55. Because you talked to 3 So like the next, yeah, the next hour, it's like you've got the, uh, the such and such room. It's like posted outside. You, got, you need to take everybody to that. It's upstairs. It's upstairs. One of those upstairs okay. rooms. Yeah. If anybody wants to, we can talk about it. Pair programming is awesome. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's really cool. Can be like awesome. This, I like this short talk. Like this exercise. Yeah. Like I think it's a change in pressure when I transfer that out for those like paper things. I totally thought I did that. What did I do? Thanks, guys. Well, it's a big delegation. There's one memorial, and it's dangerous to go home. Instead of take this, it says take one of these. And it's like no, it's mine. A long way over there, and I'm adjusting. It's like a whole bunch of yeah, it's where you pull the tab off. Like, why am I like, it's not a tab? It's like right here. The sword. Oh, yeah.